Welcome to David and David on Real Estate. Join us as we explore the ins and outs of the real estate market. Good morning and welcome to the David and David on Real Estate podcast. We are today on episode number 81. And we have with us Shana from Red Rover. Shana, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to have you on. And uh, this is uh, the type of services that you offer are, are very unique to the marketplace. We're going to get all into that. But before we do, tell us a little bit more about yourself. All right. So um, basically, I've been in real estate for 40 years. I know that sounds strange since I'm only 37. Uh, but no, seriously, my dad is a, uh, a realtor. So I'm a second generation realtor. I grew up um, at open houses. I grew up at showings and purchasers visits. And uh, so I knew, I knew the, the industry. I loved the industry. I loved the people more than anything. Um, and then my partner, Aaron, started as a rover, uh, which is what we call our assistants. Um, and then about a year ago, decided to join me and is now my partner in the company and things are going strong. But uh, yeah, that's, I I always swore I would never get into real estate. I loved it, but I hated it at the same time. Um, and then it happened. I'm not sure how it happened. One day, all of a sudden, I had a license in hand and I went, oh my goodness, what the hell did I just do? So Shana, your, um, your partner was a rover and you're wearing red. <laughs> So is that, is that a coincidence that you're wearing red today? Is it, or how'd you get the name Red Rover? So my original business partner um, had red hair and everybody called her red. So that's where the red came in because uh, my favorite curl color is purple. So it would have been purple red Rover if I named it. Um, and Rover is what we do. We rove. We Our original concept was that we were going to be more of a concierge service, less of a, an administrative service. So Red Rover was the name we started with, but uh, the company has definitely uh, evolved from there. So yeah, see, I knew there'd be a, there'd be a, a real explanation for the name somehow. And it's just coincidental that you're wearing red today. Well, it's also a good color on me, even yeah. though okay. the audience can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they could see it. Um, so j just go back, but so you were an active real estate agent doing the, like the regular. Are you doing residential, commercial, a little of both? What was your real estate background? I was doing mostly residential. Um, my background before red, before real estate was I was a Curves franchise owner. So I owned and operated eight Curves franchises. So I dabbled in the commercial side of uh, real estate before I even got into it. But yeah, mostly uh, mostly residential. And I loved condo was my the thing I love to do. Uh, mostly downtown Toronto, but... My dad, being the old timer he was, believed that Toronto uh, was his niche. There was no market. There was no Cabbage Town or Riverdale. It was Toronto. He knew Toronto inside and out. So we worked Toronto. Um, and that's, uh, that's how I got started. It's an it's a interesting perspective, right? Because when you're that close to the industry, and you have been for your whole life. You know, you see the pain points. You know, yes. you see what happens after the showings, you see what happens, you know, after the clients uh, get into the houses, right? So you're very close to it. Yeah, yeah. And um, and and I guess, um, you know, Red Rover, in, in a way, fills all those gaps. Well, that's why I started it. It was, you know, first of all, my, I, I, I didn't like being a realtor. Um, I loved working with realtors, but I didn't like the hours they worked. I didn't like the stress and pull that it took on them as individually uh, individuals and on their families. Um, and when we started this, it was just meant to be a job for me and my original partner. We didn't see this growing into anything at the beginning, um, and it's grown a lot. Um, but what we saw was a gap in services for realtors. You know, they had their photographer and they had their sign installer, and that was pretty much it. And doing everything else, they did it all. They slogged everything. And they also couldn't do everything. Um, I know when my dad started, it was 24-7. Some realtors still treat it like it's 24-7 because they're trying to do everything and they don't have to. Um, we watched, you know, going my dad going on vacation, and I still laugh about this because he had that big phone in the bag you know, and his big laptop. And those were two, two check bags because they were huge. And that's how we took our vacations. He didn't take time off. 
Um, so going on vacations was a big one when we started that we wanted to make sure that realtors could actually turn off, not bring a computer, turn off their cell phone and go and have that res restorative vacation that they so desperately needed. And so that's where we started was with licensed services and road services. And then we just started looking at how we could help them with virtual assistance. And this is where the company has really um, grown and bloomed over the last couple of years. Um, you know, it's really hard to hire an assistant because you really have two options. You're either going to hire someone full-time or part-time. You do not need a full-time assistant. I can tell you a very high percentage of realtors do not need someone full-time. You're going to hire them full-time and they're going to sit around half that day doing nothing. So you're wasting your money. The other option was hiring someone part-time and you know, the solution was, oh, I'll hire them part-time and they'll find another part-time job. Well, within three months, they're gone because they found something full-time where they don't have to do this juggling act. Or my favorite, I'll share an assistant with you, my friend for the next cubicle over. That, to this day, I have never once seen work out. They think it'll work. It'll work for three months, maybe six. And then they'll, I wanted them this day, you know, the fight that happens. So, that was never a, a good solution. So we came up with a solution that we will have the, the, the assistance, we will have our rovers, and we will then um, subcontract them to you for 10 hours, 20, 30, and sometimes even full-time 40 hours a week. Yeah, so like every real estate agent is basically an independent contractor, right? They're their own business. Yep. It, they're, they're doing everything themselves unless they decide to get some help. Yep. Right. And, uh, you know, for many, they've got all lots of time to do everything while they're in town and while they, it's a week that they plan to be working. So I guess it's an obvious one for, for those, you know, going on vacation for someone to cover for them while they're gone, but, but you're providing it also for people that are, are here and working, but don't want to do some of the administrative things and and get to use an assistant that way i think more importantly they shouldn't be doing the administrative things i think if you're a realtor your value is here you know i've had them calculate it we've done the the work guys tell me what you are worth per hour and they calculate themselves anywhere from usually a hundred to two hundred dollars an hour but they're the realtors that are calculating themselves at 500 to a thousand per hour good for them but why should they be doing a task that they can hire someone for a lot less? So we offer three basic levels of service and they are virtual, road services and licensed services. So I'm gonna explain them a little bit for you. So our virtual services can happen one of two ways. There's ad hoc. So basically, David, you're on the road and you're like, I need to book appointments, but I don't have time to do it. Give us a call. We will book appointments, charge you an hour, your appointments are booked by the time you get to your last showing to start the next set of showings. And then we send you an invoice. Very straightforward. You get whoever's available at the time from our pool of rovers that will do the work for you. And that's just an hourly rate? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. And the other one is on contract. So this is where you are committing to 10 hours a week or more. And we do something like a matchmaking, a Cupid service where we match your needs to the services that one of our rovers can offer. So let's say you're using Exact as a database and you're on Treb, not Matrix, and you use AuthentiSign, not DocuSign. So we really try to take those needs and match it with someone that has the skills. However, our rovers are very um, flexible and they learn quickly. So we do our best, but we match make. And you are then with one rover they're with you 10 hours a week and they run your business. And we kind of have this line in the sand. If it's com if it's computer facing or paper facing, your assistant should be doing that. If it's telephone, Zoom or per face to face, which we should be back to face by to face by now, that should be your job. The agent should be doing that and leaving everything else to their their assistant. So that's how our contract services work. And it's great. They don't need to hire somebody full-time. They can have somebody for 10 hours. They have somebody they, they can grow with because that's essentially what happens is they have this person that they begin to rely on more and more and realize that they can unload these services that are things they shouldn't be doing, the back-end work, the paper load, the up uploading. 
service, contacting service providers, organizing all the stuff that you need for a listing. That's what your assistant should be doing. That's what your rover does. I love it. And, and Shana, um, just to dive deep, a little deeper into that, do they get the logins for the uh, realtors that they're helping? So do they use their DocuSign, their uh, AuthentiSign? Do they log into their trap sort of point and yeah. show up as them? Yep, absolutely. Um, sometimes the, you know, all of our rovers sign a non-disclosure, non-compete confidentiality. And knock on wood, we've had very good luck with that so far. So most realtors are very comfortable with this. They share logins. Uh, we, as the owners, Aaron and I also get a copy of those so that if something happens, we bring our safety net in. So if you, your assistant gets sick, we go, no problem. Here you go. This person can help you today. She has your logins. She's ready to jump in. Um, there are some realtors that are like, no, I want to use LastPass. And so then they'll set them up on that. However, LastPass just had a huge breach. So I'm not sure it's any more of a better system than we have. Um, but yeah, so it's dependent on comfort level. But more often than not, they just share their, their logins and, and go in and do the work. They never act as they are the agent. So if they're doing up a DocuSign, they would type it up. They would put it in DocuSign. It goes to the realtor first. They have to be the first sign off on any DocuSign. They're looking it over and basically saying, yes, I sign off on this, meaning they've read it, they accept it, they see it, it's theirs. So we have those checks and balances in places. I like that. That's actually a policy that we implement in here in the brokerage as well um, at the front desk is that, you know, the uh, the realtor gets the DocuSign first, they sign, and once they complete the document, then it goes out to the docu uh, to the to the clients, right? So it's, it's just, you know, taking that extra step to make sure that they have the ultimate responsibility over the document for anything that goes out. So that's, that's really, that's really smart. It's a great uh, fail safe. I, I like that. So, so, even if, so if the realtor is away, they still have to be involved. So if, if there's the realtor, a transaction in play, they got because they got to be, be looking at those documents. It depends. So if the realtor uh, is away and has decided that they still want to have one foot in the door, then yes. If they uh, do not want to do that, then what we do is we have a licensed person in place that basically takes over their position completely. So then they don't have to be involved. It's that licensed rover that does the work. Their name is on the paperwork. It's under their title and everything completely. So, but they're doing it as a licensed realtor on behalf of the realtor who's really got the source and everything. So, yeah. and, you know, Dave, maybe, you know, like, I guess you as an owner broker, you don't have a problem mm -hmm. with that because you got somebody who's not part of Sutton that's ah, no, dealing with this problem. or how does that work? Yeah. I'm going to get Sure, sure. Go, go ahead and I'll add to this too, because I mean, that does co cause some com complexity. So um, that would have to be dealt with a, with a referral agreement and we actually have to go under the other brokerage. We actually don't do it that way at all. We're actually very, okay. very careful when it comes to providing licensed services. Um, and this is, it's um, a very, it's a privilege because not a lot of realtors get this service. We right. have to have a relationship with the brokerage. And so let's say it's Sutton. What we do is we have a relation with relationship with them where they've agreed to a allow us to have somebody within their brokerage that is licensed do work within their brokerage. So okay, let's say yeah. let's say Sue wants to be one of our rovers. She's still a she's still a, a salesperson at Sutton, but she's also a rover with Red Rover. Somebody calls in and says, "I need someone to watch my vacation for the week." We get Sue to do the work. So it is within the umbrella of that Sutton brokerage. Secondly, the payment is made through the break brokerage. We are not breaking any RICO rules. We are making sure that we have covered all of that. So anything that is done uh, that has to do with the trade in real estate is done directly through the brokerage. So we're using somebody within the brokerage and the brokerage is paying out the fees, charging the, um, the realtor and paying the third party fee. If it is um, a deal like this that we're talking about and this, the work is done, then it is still a referral, but it is done within the brokerage. We don't do outside brokerage work for lease, uh, for um, licensed work. Did that make sense? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So basically you guys find an agent within the brokerage, 
um, and and then develop a relationship, and then that way, um, you know, it, it's it's a lot seamless and a lot easier to to co coordinate those logistics. And I mean, at Sutton Summit, we have two hundred twenty uh, five realtors, so I mean, you know, we we could uh, easily accommodate that as well. And most, you know, larger brokerages could. Yeah, that's so, awesome. You know, so so that person, let's say you you pick someone at your brokerage, David, and he's you know that person's the designated rover or maybe you got more than one person. So that rover is going to get paid something for doing whatever their, their involvement is, but they get paid through red rover. It's not part of a referral agreement. So if it, so we have three levels of service, we have our virtual services, we have road services, which would be like um, installing a lockbox or picking up and delivering a, a check, marketing material, things like that. That's road services. That's not licensed. Anything like that, any brokerage, any realtor can use us. The only time that it becomes um, an issue where we have to up the, the ante is on our license services. So that's when we have to have the relationship with the brokerage. RICO has the rule that says you cannot pay anybody to do anything that has to do with the trade and real estate unless it is directly through the brokerage. So that's where we put those checks and balances in place. The person we hire is within Sutton and Sutton charges the realtor and pays the rover. Um, and we make sure that that is the only way we do our license services so that RICO can never come back to us and say we've done it wrong. We want to make sure that we're always following that rule. If it, it becomes more than just an hourly fee and it's a referral, then again, it's still within Sutton and we do the referral agreement within that. So that way, if they're on vacation, it is still within the family. We're not taking it outside of the family. No, I, I like this. And I mean, there's there's so many different services that we can tap into and talk about and, and, and explore. And as a realtor, I mean, you're the jack of all trades, you know, um, I, I think talking about opportunity costs as a business owner is so important, right? Because it's so easy to keep busy by focusing on those uh, low revenue tasks, I'm going to call them, that can easily eat up your whole day, right? But as a realtor, um, as a business owner, as somebody who wants to systemize and actually own an actual business, it's so much smarter to outsource those low revenue activities and focus on the high revenue activities, like being in front of your clients, like prospecting, like lead generation, like lead, uh, like business development, and that's really where realtors excel. It's a, you know, Sabia Ali, our broker of records, says it's a belly to belly person. You have to get in front of people. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you can't get in front of people if you're installing log boxes or, or going to fix for sale signs or dropping off flyers or, or you know, doing the thousand other menial tasks that realtors do every day. Right. Yeah. And it's so easy to let that consume and completely overtake your schedule. And by the way, if you get that phone call, say, hey, this house just came up on the market. I, you know, I, I want to see it, but you're out on the other side of the city installing a, a log box. You know, that's going to take you an hour to get to the other side of the city. Um, and, and you know, that might be a missed opportunity. Right? So as a business owner, Shane, I, I love what you guys are doing. I, I think it gives realtors a lot more flexibility and it buys back their time to yep. focus on the things they should be doing. They should be going out there mingling. They should be, you know, taking clients out to lunch. They should be getting in front of clients and they should be really prospecting and doing those high revenue activities that are, uh, you know, paying their bills and, and putting money in the pocket. And, and frankly, it's doing what they do best and it's doing what they love. When you're doing things you don't love, your business is never going to prosper. I, I actually love doing the administrative side of things. I didn't enjoy the belly to belly. So that's why I did what I did. That's why I transitioned into this. And that's what realtors should be doing. They should not be sitting there slogging away at a desk if they don't enjoy doing it. If you enjoy doing it, good for you. But if you don't, if that's not where your skill set lies, if that's not, not where you shine, you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. So give us an idea, because I mean, I'm sure, you know, you've been doing this for, for a really long time. Like, give us, uh, gi give us your top five requests that uh, um, were really unorthodox and, uh, <laughs> um, you know, went above and beyond and, and, and just surprised the, the, the heck out of you and, and, and the clients and, um, you know, ended in a really good customer service experience. 
First unusual request, I cannot tell you because if I tell you the uniqueness of the request, the person listening or other people would know. So I'm not going to tell you that one. Um, <laughs> we have been asked at the beginning, we were called the Yes Girls. So we would sit at an open house and hold the baby or sorry, not an open house, a uh, purchaser's visit. We would sit there and babysit, essentially. Uh, we took someone's kid to Pokemon tournaments. Uh, we would go walk a dog. We, we were the Yes Girls. We did everything. But the most unusual request um, was probably when I was asked to remove somebody's sex toys from their house while I was helping stage a, to a, stage a house. <laughs> they didn't want their mom to go into the closet and find them. Oh my God. So that was probably the most unusual. <laughs> so is there a premium for doing that? Is there a, like, is it, yeah. that ups the ante a little bit, I think. Uh, no, as long as I get to use it as a story, I think it was pretty good. <laughs> But those are my most unusual. We, you know, we have been asked to do a lot of things. Um, top requests are usually, first of all, home inspections and purchase visits. Why any realtor is still doing those and not contracting those out is beyond me. You're spending an hour showing it to them and their closest 20 family members when they're going to move in there in a month anyways, or you're watching their contractor measure for the next kitchen. That to me was the biggest waste of time that realtors had. The other one was home inspections. You're going to get a report in less than five minutes after they're done, but you have to spend anywhere from two to seven hours. And yes, I said seven hours. I did a seven hour home inspection once. You're going to sit there for seven hours while they do the house. So those were the two biggest time wasters for licensed work. Those are the top two. Um, Unlicensed work or road work would be the lockbox. We get a lot of, can you move it from here to there? Um, and then for um, virtual work, probably typing up offers. Um, we're very good at it um, because we do a lot more of them than most realtors do in, in a year. We'll do them in a couple of weeks. So um, those would be our most requested. Wow. So th this started out as, as you and your partner read. <laughs> at some point yeah and but if you're providing this kind of service and offering it out to you know this many potential agents and existing like you need a growth pattern right so how, let's just talk about your business itself how has that grown from the two of you like how do you have enough bodies to to be everywhere it's uh it's been very interesting like i said we were this was not meant to be a company it was meant to be something for us to do um, but we started in 2014 and 2015, we brought on our first Rover, our first licensed assistant. And uh, she just does license work. She's still with us. Wow. And she was someone who did not, she wasn't actually in real estate. She had her license, had another job working in an office and decided nights and weekends she wanted to do this. So that was great. We then um, got our second person the next year. He had been in the business for 35 years, but had spent the last, say, 10 years as a stay-at-home dad. He had the experience, didn't want to go into full-time real estate, just wanted to make some extra money. So he came into our fold. We get everybody from, you know, with our license rover, we get them where they're just trying to pay their desk fee to someone, we have someone who does full-time lease leads for us. Um, and then we have others who make, Every deal she touches is three to $5 million. She only does a couple of year. So when she's bored, she comes and helps us out. So we really do get this gambit full of different types of uh, people. That's for our licensed work, for our virtual work. We are extremely picky. Uh, they go through a very rigorous uh, hiring process. They have to have had at least three years experience in Ontario residential real estate. They don't even go to the next step if they don't have that. Uh, then we put them through a couple of uh, tests, surveys, things like that. Um, and then the interview, referrals, uh, checking their their with their past companies and things like that. So we are very picky. We want to make sure that everybody that comes to us can plug and play. So basically, we can put them with David, say, here's his programs. And he can say, here's what I need to do. He goes to meet the clients. They start working. That's how seamless we want this process to go. So, okay, so just back to my question, like what type of uh, numbers do you have in terms of people? Oh. Like, Yeah, we have about 30 right now. We have about 30 rovers. Um, most of our licensed rovers just do licensed work. 
Um, and then we have about 10 that do mostly just virtual work. So either ad hoc, ad hourly, or they have contracts that they do consistently. Yeah, because I was just thinking like, you know, as a small business owner, we always like to take the conversation there a little bit on these on these podcasts. Like, like you've got to make sure you have enough bodies around to jump in when you need them to or when the agents need them to. Otherwise, they're in the same position that they were before when, oh, we're sharing an assistant, but I need somebody, but that person's not available to me. When am I the priority or how do I become the priority? Like you got to avoid that, right? So I assume you yeah. need, you want as much notice as possible. Correct. But sometimes yeah. you get short notice and sometimes people just get sick or you yeah. know, oh, COVID. A procedure, you know, COVID, I'm sure. Yeah. The last minute requests were great then. We did a lot of last minute requests. Most realtors understand our services and that we do need notice for a lot of things. Most Because those services are ad hoc. They're hourly. They're not guaranteed. If you're on contract, you're guaranteed. Your, your work is covered. You are priority. So that's never a concern. But for the licensed work, the unlicensed or the ad hoc uh, virtual just give us as much notice as possible and we can get it done. We hate saying no. We really hate saying no. So uh, we have our, our assistants, our rovers will rearrange their schedules to get it done. Yeah, exactly. that's, that's what I look as. And I'm thinking as we're doing this, like, you know, how can we doing this for the legal profession too? Oh, I'm, we get that question all the time, David. Oh, please, will you work with us? Please, please, please. We get it all the time and we've had to, um, absolutely put our, our stake in the ground and say, no, we are uh, real estate professionals and we are going to just focus on that. We don't want to be the agency that deals with dental offices, lawyers, mortgage brokers. We do get the requests all the time, but if somebody wants to start that, I will help them and talk them through how to start in that business for you. I, I just tell everybody, like, it's, it's almost impossible to be a sole <laughs> practitioner lawyer in, in doing real estate work if you're doing criminal work you're you're okay if you're doing something like that you're living in your car you're you don't even need an office you're you're at you know jail houses and yeah. curtains meeting clients and stuff like that or back alleys but a, but a real estate lawyer like there we couldn't go away if you're, you're a sole practitioner you couldn't go away you have to close your deal online <laughs> now it's a little easier because the technology is caught up a little bit I remember years ago, you know, one lawyer that we deal with a lot, like really good lawyer, but he's always been a sole practitioner and he'd want to go to Florida for, for a few weeks. And I said, like, like, what do you do? He said, well, first of all, I, I just sent you a few referrals to your office because I can't close them th that week. And that's what he would basically do. He'd have his clerk there, but he was trying not to have closings during the couple weeks where he was taking a vacation. He had to have lawyers in other offices doing it. Yep. And like, that's, you know, that's a hard way to make a living. Like it is, it is. And that's why outsourcing has become so popular now. Um, and I think David, you use the term, why is it such a hot topic? Well, it's a hot topic. It comes up constantly and we hear it at the trade shows and we hear it on our phone calls and we hear it when we're reading the blogs and it, it comes down to three things. Should I, or shouldn't I, um, if I do, where do I outsource to and where do I start? So First of all, yes, you should. We've already talked about this. I think this is already solved. Your time is worth more than what you're doing. So you shouldn't be spending your $100, $200, $500 value per hour doing paperwork. Um, you need to invest in yourself, invest in your business. We like to say if you don't hire an assistant, you become one. So we look at it this way. You're either self-employed or you have a business. If you don't have an assistant, you're self-employed. If you have a business, then you probably have support staff. And that means you are focusing on what you are do best and you're leaving the rest to somebody who's doing what they do best. The second is, where do I outsource to? So it, it, we get this question a lot. Why would I hire you when I can go overseas? So overseas has its advantages. It's definitely more cost effective. You can get someone for five to $10 an hour, sometimes less, sometimes more. However, you're dealing with three major things. You're dealing with a language barrier and a language barrier on people's largest transactions. You're dealing with a time difference and yeah, they're going to shift their time for you. But I don't know if you've talked to shift workers, they are not the most uh, with it all the time. And then you're dealing with tech issues. And we're seeing this a lot lately. When we had the major storms, the tsunamis, all of that, they were shut down. They couldn't, they weren't getting to us. So 
that became a major problem for some of these realtors that were hiring overseas. Hiring local, and this is very important to me, it means we are investing in our economy. Uh, it means that you're in the same time zone and we're having, I'm not saying no tech issues because obviously we've seen our internet go down a few times with uh, a couple of companies that won't be named, but you're having less tech issues. Um, hiring local has its advantages, right? But it also has its disadvantages. You have to do the hiring. Our hiring process, like I said, is rigorous. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. You have to then train them because you're probably not getting people that are trained in everything you need. And then you have to trust that the work is gonna get done instead of looking over your shoulder every five minutes. You have to be able to delegate and leave. So where do you start? Realtors are dealing with their clients' largest investments. Their clients are hiring a professional, so why shouldn't they hire a professional as well? Red Rover, like I said, we only hire people with a minimum of three years experience. They have to be local. So if you're looking to outsource your administrative work, you need to call Red Rover. That's where you need to start. Shana, the uh, the concept of outsourcing is, is not new to me. When I was... Uh like 15 years old, I used to, you know, create websites and, 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 you know, dabble in, in online businesses. And I used to outsource to India all the time and get these beautiful websites created for, for really pennies on the dollar. But I stopped doing that. I stopped outsourcing to India because the language barrier was, was so great that, you know, I'd rather build relationships with people here locally that I could explain what I want. And I can get the product I wanted, you know, it was better quality. There was no doubt that there was a difference in quality of, of, of stuff produced here, especially like um, on the customer interaction uh, portion, you know, they just understood marketing better. They understood what we wanted better. Right. But the time difference and the language barrier, it, it just got to me after a little bit of time. And I said, you know what, I, I just, you know, I don't want to be repeating myself 50 times on the same thing where I could say one sentence to somebody in North America and they would understand what I wanted. So I think the consistency in service and, and, and you nailed the, the nail on the head. I mean, we are professionals, you know, no doubt about it. Right. And, and who we work with matters and who represents us matters yeah. so much. So, you know, the fact that you um, have consistency in your service and quality is really, really important. And, and, you know, I love the fact that you guys go through a rigorous interview process and, um, you know, you guys have different quality of rovers. Like I, I love that, that you share that story that you have a rover that does, you know, three, four, five million dollar listings. She doesn't do a lot of them. She does a few, but she only needs to do a few to earn a really good living. And then, you know, she does other things, but you, you, you know, in my mind, I, I just imagine somebody like that you know, being at the top of their game, yeah. right? It, it, being, you know, knowing how to deal with those high level clients. And it gives me, um, it, it gives me an assurance that if, hey, if I have a high level multi-million dollar client that she would treat that client like I would want them to be treated. So, you know, again, it, it gives me or it would give me confidence as, as, a, as a real estate professional to say, you know what, I understand that, you know, you understand the mindset, the language, and the expectation for what is expected for the work that's performed from uh, from a client like that. Absolutely, yeah. So I got just another question back as, as a business owner. So you started this, you, you build it up, you've got 30 odd people available to you. Like, like that's a great success story, first of all. So congratulations Thank you. on that part of it. Um, so, you know, one of you, I'm, I'm just thinking your competition. So you, I, I get your argument against competition from overseas. Are you, is there anybody else here locally that's doing what you're doing that you're competing with? No. Uh, and it's actually been a funny story. Um, what do they say? Imitation is the biggest form of flattery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've had people, they go the full process to the point we've hired them. And then they go, haha, and they go, they go to a brokerage and they try to replicate what we do. We've had four that we know have done this and failed epically. Um, you're, I lost your question in there. <laughs> no, I was, I was just wondering if there was, you know, oh, whether so they're a copycat or the imitator, but is there real, is there a real competition for this There's service right zero now? zero competition. Uh, you know, we have the people that, we have individuals out there that 
you know, ha have started taking on a few clients, but they can't scale the way we do. Um, we have, there are uh, temp agencies out there that will help um, a realtor find an assistant. Uh, the horror stories I've heard are actually a little bit heartbreaking and the money spent trying to do that. Um, but no, there's really no competition. Some in has some brokerages have tried to replicate it in house. Again, they had they haven't been able to do it. And I think the reason why, um, at least the way I look at it, is this is my pride and joy. This is my baby. I love what I do. This is not like let's add a side um, a side hustle to our real estate business. Let's you know try and focus on something we don't we're not really good at. This is all we do. This is all we focus on. It's real estate. We love real estate. We live real estate. And so the product that we can give you is 100% real estate. So nobody's been able to replicate it. Nobody's been able to compete with us. Okay. And another question I have, I'm sure David's got more, but um, in terms of the realtors that you are working with, is is it a like a cross section? Is it coming from all different types of brokerages across the board or is it certain you're getting some from certain brokerages in particular because they don't have enough support in-house. It's funny. We get it across the board. Now we, we did start at one brokerage, a very large brokerage. It's where we were licensed. Um, and at the beginning, we didn't need to grow from them. They had over a thousand realtors. So we could just sit there and take what we wanted and, uh, and grow that way. And then COVID came and some of our license, the road work dried up. And that's when we had to grow our virtual side of things. And that's when we realized we had such a, great thing that we could do it across the board. Our average realtor has always been a, you know, a mid-range realtor. They're making enough money to pay an assistant and they're not making enough that they need a full-time assistant. Uh, we do have teams. We have teams. Our biggest team, I think, is seven people on it. Um, so we do get a full range. We get our, we get a lot of women. I probably say 75% of our clientele are women. Um, they do naturally know how to delegate better. So they can come in here, hand off a workload and go do what they do best. Men do have a harder time letting go of that there's, control. There's trust issues. And... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to call it a control issue, David, but you go with trust. <laughs> but yeah, so average we do we get we get young we get some really new i mean i love the new agents they're coming in hot they're like my business is gonna kill it but i know that i don't need to do this work i'm gonna hire somebody to do my admin work i'm gonna hire someone to do my photography i'm not gonna try and be an iphone pro and do my own photos they they come in knowing that they are going to outsource everything that isn't face-to-face -face lead generation and prospecting um, and then we get the the older agents, the seasoned agents, as I like to call them, who have been basically throwing crap at the wall for 30 years. They have zero systems in place and they come to us and say, OK, now I need your help. I need to run this like a business. And what we do is we have something called set up for success. So we go in, we personalize task lists for them so that they can deal with their buyers or sellers from lead all the way to follow through. Um, and aftercare. And so we set them up with that. They then usually end up hiring us to also give them a rover and assistant, but we get everything in between. We really do have a wide range of ages and both sexes and coming in at different levels of their, their life or, and their business. Sean, I, I love that you mentioned uh, control or, or, or feel of, a fear of delegation, because I think that's um, a big impediment to uh, realtors really scaling their business, right? Mm -hmm. if, if, if you can't set up the systems and the support network around who you are as a realtor, right? And what services you provide your clients, you will never scale your business. It's just impossible because you are one person. There's 24 hours in a day. There's seven days a week. I mean, time is finite. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and you are, you only have so much time in the day. So, you know, being a broker owner and, 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 you know, talking to realtors and motivating realtors and watching realtors unfold their business. The only way to scale your business is if you give up that control. Mm -hmm. Right. 
and and you know I've worked with with a wonderful recruiter in the past and you know one of the questions that she asks is like you know tell me about your business what's different what's your value proposition as a realtor right and and hearing her um, talk about you know everybody that she works with and and you know everybody thinks that they're unique that they're special that they're this wonderful person and they have wonderful services that nobody can replicate right and we of course know that you know everybody does have a unique selling proposition and everybody is unique however the services that you provide to your clients you know they're not that unique no right it, it's you know, you you can only differentiate yourself so much. And, and there's a lot of, you know, really good talent out there that will do very similar work to what you do. So, you know, that fear of losing control, that fear of, of, of not delegating, anybody listening to this podcast, I just want you to realize how limiting that is, right? The biggest realtors that have scaled their business are the ones that have started teams, are the ones that have delegated to, you know, people underneath them that are able to replicate times and, and replicate the time spent with their clients. That's the only way to grow in this business. There's no other way to do it. I'm sorry, guys. There's no magic pill. There's no formula. If you want to double, triple, quadruple your income, you have to build out a team. You have to give up control. You have to delegate and you have to create systems. Yeah. There's no other way of doing it. I'm I, like, there's just no, or, you know, refocus on, on going after the really high end properties and stop dealing with low end properties to increase your revenue. Right. But the, but the better way of doing is to really, you know, sit down and, and really take a look at how you delegate and how, and how you control your clients. Yeah. Right. If you don't, if you don't go through that process in your real estate career or in your real estate business, you will always be stuck in the same spot you are today, which for you know some realtors is okay. But if you want to grow, you have to change your mentality. And it's like flipping a switch. Yeah. You know, if you are willing to flip a switch, right, and just try something a little bit different, you know, you're gonna see changes in your business. But if you hang on to that old mentality of like, I'm the best. I'm going to service my clients the best. Nobody else is going to do it like me, right? That's limiting. It's it's a limiting scarcity mindset that is going to prevent you from really scaling and growing your business. So, you know, Shana, I'm excited. Like, I, I'd love you guys to come to the brokerage and I'd love to, you know, um, start offering your services to, to the realtors. And I think the ones that really embrace what it is that you offer are going to, you know, see their revenue increase and focusing on those high revenue activities is what's going to make the biggest difference to their bottom line. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I heard something recently. Somebody said fear and excitement are the exact same thing. It's just what you do with it. So mm -hmm. these realtors that are living their life on this base of fear just need to change their mindset and start being excited at the prospect of what they could do. Flip that switch, change one thing in your business today, invest in yourself, invest in your business. You're going to see the return, but you have to invest in your business and you have to let go. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, you know, we, we are such a customer uh, service driven <laughs> industry. Like we're in the service business. Like that's really what a realtor is. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't take a lot to go above and beyond to really blow your clients out of the water, you know, on closing date, instead of them having to drive to the lawyer's office. And I mean, I know we do log boxes now. So, I mean, that that's kind of a mute point, right? But back in the day, like, you know, if you send a rover to the, uh, to the lawyer's office to pick up a key and hand deliver it to wherever the client is, hey, your house closed 30 minutes ago. Congratulations. He is, here is a key to your new house, uh, Mr. Buyer, Mr. Seller, even at the Tim Hortons as they're waiting and grabbing coffee with the moving truck behind them. Like, imagine that love of service. And it's going to cost the realtor 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars for, for that service. I mean, it's a no brainer, right? Yeah. Like, there's well, well, you have to think of it, it's not really costing you that 60 bucks because you're using that time to earn. 500 bucks or a yeah. thousand bucks or, or like something way bigger because you because there's only 24 hours in the day so how are you choosing 
to use your time to maximize your, your business opportunities. So you can't look at, oh, I got to pay some, I don't, I'll save the 50 bucks and I'll go pick up the key. Myself, you got to get out of that mindset and say, no, I'm instead of me spending that hour, I'm going to use that hour for something else. Now, it might just be use the hour to have a workout or you or to do something else. But but that might be a better use of your time or spend an hour with your kid or whatever you're going to do. That might be a better use of your time and well worth that 50 bucks. Absolutely. Brilliant points. I mean, time blocking, making sure that you spend time with your family is so essential. What we give um, the agents is it gives them the ability, the ability to be more available to their customers. How can you increase your customer experience without that? You're more available to them. You are more consistent. So your emails that are going out are consistently the same. Your The way your business is run, you're not just a real estate agent. You are running a business. So your business runs the same way. You're more professional because you're not sitting there worried about the paperwork that you may or may not have put submitted or that extra initial that forgot get, to get initialed. You're not dealing with any of that. So you have the ability to just relax and be more professional. Overall, these realtors that are doing this and making the investments, they're more balanced, they're more happy, and uh, they're still married. <laughs> Shane, I get asked all the time from my realtors, like, how do I get more referrals? You know, and this is such a hot topic button because, you know, if you do a job well, you know, your clients are going to thank you. Say, you know what, David, thank you very much. You did a great job. Amazing, right? But it's only if you go above and beyond and really blow them away that that's when the referrals start coming in, right? And, and realtors don't understand this point. They're like, oh, I did such a good job. Like, why am I not getting more referrals? Well, because you weren't exceptional, because you weren't impressionable, because you didn't blow your clients out of the water to the point that all they can think about is, is the level of experience, experience that you've provided, right? Like we pay for experiences. Yeah. When you go to a restaurant, like if the food is good, great, you pay for the food, right? But if the if there's an experience, if you know the ambience is amazing, if there's fireworks, if there's a live volcano in the background, you're like, wow. And if the food comes and it's mediocre and it's very expensive, you're like, oh, I feel good because the experience yeah. was amazing. I'm gonna tell everybody, like that experience was great. Oh my God, I felt the fire from the volcano sitting back. My goodness, what's going on here? Everybody needs to go and experience this. Yeah. Right. But if you just had a good experience that you expected, okay, great. I had a good, ex he was a good realtor, right? But if you blow them away by going above and beyond and create an experience for them, then you're going to get the referrals. Absolutely. Then the magic happens, right? Then they tell all their friends, their neighbors, their, their cousins, their, their unborn child that, <laughs> hey, David did this for me. You won't believe it. Like what an experience I had dealing with him. And that, uh, that's the mind frame that we have to have as professionals, right? To deliver that experience. Yeah. You know, David Corman, like 81 episodes, you know, we, we throw so much value. We throw so many ideas, you know, we, is there another podcast where we have a lawyer, right. And a broker owner just, you know, do this to improve your business, you know, get, take this idea, do this. But, you know, the, we, we want to create an experience for the people listening and we want to give back. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. If, if you don't create that experience for your clients, <laughs> if you're not memorable, if you don't go above and beyond, you're just another average realtor. And guess what? On the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board, there's 72,000 of them. That number still blows my mind. Shana, that's just a big opportunity for you because I'm sure you've got a, a few thousand to contact still. <laughs> there, there might be a few thousand. There might be a few. But yeah, we we what we do, what we our mindset right now is that we need to keep a consistent level of service ourselves so that we can continue to service our realtors. So right. we're being very mindful that we don't grow too quickly. Right. You have to be able to deliver. Yeah, that is always at the forefront of our minds. So communication is key. Um, 
you know, what you're talking about, communication between realtor and their client is the most important thing. But same with us, between the realtors and us, between the rural rovers and us, and between the rovers and the realtors, that communication is what makes the world go round. Um, we go above and beyond. We have a safety net in place, as I mentioned. And that means if your rover gets sick, goes on pregnancy leave, or does quit, we're not like a temp agency. We jump in. We have somebody that are there the next day, the next minute. So we can make sure that nothing falls through the cracks. Um, we're constantly listening to our realtors. What do you need? How can we expand our services? What else can we offer? You know, we say, tell us, what do you need? If we can do it, we will. If we can't, we probably know someone that can. Um, so we keep we keep our, uh, we stay current. We know other services that are out there. We're always trying to learn what else is out there that we can refer to or give them value here. Like we, we've researched these CRMs and we really think right now, this one's on the cutting edge. You might want to take a look at it. Um, and I got to say most importantly, and this is a really big deal for us, we pay a living wage. And we decided to do this last year, which meant we had to increase our prices. Um, but at the time, it meant that, People that we're hiring are happy. They like what they're doing. They love where they are. And they're not spending time with one eye on Indeed while they're supposed to be doing your work, looking for one extra dollar an hour. The people that we hire now are happy. They are doing what they love and they're getting paid for it. So for us, that's how we keep our consistent level of service up. And we don't grow faster than we can. There's this chicken and egg balance that we're constantly going through. We don't hire until we have some placements and we don't bring on new realtors until we have the rovers. Love it. Love I it. think that's a real key part of the model. Otherwise you're just back to, uh, you know, I've, I've got a, a temp that I'm sharing with somebody or an assistant that I'm sharing with somebody else. And that person is not always available to me when I need them. <clears throat> like you've got to, you've got to be able to deliver on this. So, you know, I'm listening to you and I, I can't think of a downside to this like if i'm a, a realtor and let's say i know i'm going to be slow in january every year in in a good market because it's just a quieter time and i want to just spend the month in puerto vallarta i can confidently say i could go and be in puerto vallarta i could still facetime people i can still be on my computer i can still do work if i you know to some extent but i've got shane has come i got red rover on the ground back in the gta yeah. to do the legwork for me, to deliver stuff, to pick up stuff, to do other stuff. So I could function remotely yeah. for a period of time if I wanted to, whether it's a real vacation or a, you know, a, a place where I'm going to go for a while and, and I can work a little bit and, and do like, I, I can't figure, I can't think of a downside to this so far. I can't either, but people, you know, they find them, find their excuses why they shouldn't invest in their business, why it's too much or they can't let go. But, you know, that's where we work with them and say, just let's try it. Our contracts for virtual work is only a three month contract. So let's try it for three months. I think that's what's a good chunk of time that's needed to get to know your assistant and to get that ball rolling. And the people we hire have the confidence. We like to tell them, you're not working for David. You're working with David. You are growing David's business with him. So we get them in there and they have the power and the knowledge of our entire Rover base. So when the new programs come out, we talk about it. They can go back and say, hey, we hear other re realtors are using this. Um, if they see something that's going on, they'll say, look, I know you love typing your own offers. How about this? Let me just type up the next one. Let me just type the next one and then see how you like it. And then maybe I'll type the next one. And so for some of these cases where they are kind of shy and or controlling, um, we, we have the rovers help pull that out of them until they are giving more consistent work, until they do start to relax. But other than that, no, there is really no downside to this. There, there's no downside. I, I like that, Shane. I, I like taking small steps to, to breaking that mentality of control and uh, and 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 uh, delegating that's that's important. I think taking those small steps is going to give uh, realtors the confidence to jump more and 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 utilize your more of your services. But but listen, tell us about like a really good feel good story 
um, with, with, with a customer. Um, cause you know, I love feel good stories. Let's, let's end this on a really high note. All right. Well, we have we have so many. I mean, we become an integral part of a realtor's business and we've been on call for surgeries. You know, we've been on call for people's vacations. We jump in when we can. But my favorite was um, a realtor was pregnant. And so everything was prepared for. We knew we were going to jump in as soon as we were needed, but we didn't realize how it was going to happen. The husband, who is also the business partner, they're in the car on the way to the hospital. And we get a text message saying, it's go time. We were part of that. Like we were part of a birthing process basically. And it just, you know, it, it just made my heart swell. So we're, we're so proud of the relationships we build with these realtors. Um, the thing I'm most proud of though, is that we're going strong after nine years. This has actually been my longest job. Um, and for a second year in a row now, my partner and I have been nominated for the RBC Canadian women entrepreneurs award. So Keep a lookout for that, and hopefully we win this year. Oh, congratulations! Awesome. That's, congratulations! That's, that's a big deal. Yeah, I think that's. I think it's a great story, Shana, and, and it's. I, I just got to get in, in this in because I've been thinking about it for an hour already. It's Red Rover, Red Rover. Let Shana Malinsky come over, and that's what every real estate agent out there should be thinking of. Absolutely, and I promise I won't clothesline you. <laughs> so this has been a lot of fun Shana thanks for sharing your story and, and thanks for shedding light on something that is is really important in the industry right it's it's that transition or is that journey from going from being a solo entrepreneur to a business owner yeah. right and 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 that's there's a growing that has to happen there there's 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 a, a light switch that has to be flipped and it has to come from within right so I think um, you know, taking it slowly, one step at a time um, is the right way of doing it. You know, I think you guys offer a tremendous service. I think, you know, you guys are a big part of that growth for the realtors that um, choose to go down this path. You know, it's great to hear that a majority of your clients are, are women. I mean, a, a majority of the realtors in the industry are women, about 62%. I'd like to see more men utilize your services. So, um, you know, thank you for being on the David and David uh, Real Estate uh, uh, Podcast. Um, and uh, it's been great. It's been great hearing your story. Thank you both for inviting me. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks, Shana. Our pleasure. Take care, Shana. Take care. Bye-bye.